Hey, and welcome to Tech Tips with Sold Out Media. I'm Amanda. And I'm Linus. Today, we're going to do a little bit of audio engineering. Well, I don't know Ooh. if that's really the case. We're going to be making some XLRs. XLR cables. So and we want to show you how to do it. You can get a lot of different kinds of XLRs. Yeah. But you want to make sure that you get with insulation. This one here, for some reason, this cable, it's a super soft cable, the reason why I bought it. And I don't know if our camera can see inside there. There's a little bit of blue, a little bit of red, a little bit of white, and a little bit of copper color. We'll cut into that and you'll see what that is. But when I buy my cables, I make sure that I'm buying them with good insulation. And the insulation is actually also the ground cable. So it's not insulating for cold per se. It's insulating against electromagnetic fields mm -hmm. as best as it can. So it's woven copper all the way down through the cable. At the same time, be mindful of the fact that each and every one of your XLRs probably has a copper wo weave going all the way around it, which means if it's coiled and going around a power source like this, it's going to become a magnet, an electromagnet. And then that's where you start picking up noise in your cable. Yeah. Good insulation helps prevent that because it's woven in a, per, a certain way, but you still want to avoid coiling it around power because it's still a copper coil. Yeah, copper okay. is copper. Copper is copper. So here's another little side rant. I've had this forever. Before my husband and I even started dating, this was the very first birthday present he ever bought me, a Leatherman <laughs> Wave. I've had Lifetime this- Lifetime warranty. 25 year warranty. 25 year, that's and almost lifetime. This is an excellent tool. And if you're working as a technician or even in most productions, yeah, I mean, this is something that so you many, should have. They have so many different versions of it too. Yeah, exactly. I got my pliers, I got yeah, scissors, yeah, I got screwdrivers, but this is an excellent tool. We have tools here at the TV station that actually you can put the cable in and just twist it around and it will pop off exactly the right amount. Yeah, but, but that's not how I was taught. No. So you go Sense out. The tools. You go out, buy a leather man, but don't use it for this. <laughs> buy the cabling tool so you don't cut your thumb open. Yeah. I am not responsible if you cut your thumb open doing this, but just apply a little bit of pressure or use your cabling tool, yeah. and you see the the outer protection comes right off. So how much did you cut away now? Very very little because I'm fixing to do I think the male end of the cable. Mm -hmm. You can see this copper here, right? In between the copper is this uh, cotton insulation. It does nothing. So I just take my little Leatherman scissors or sometimes if I'm in a rush I'll just use my side clippers. There we go. What you want to do is once you get all that cotton out of the way, you want to take the copper shield which runs the whole length of the cable and you actually want to twist it all together so it doesn't get away from you because now that becomes your ground cable. Okay? Now we have three cables in here. Mm -hmm the shield, which is the ground cable, the red cable, which is hot, and the blue cable, which is not. Uh, now, there is another kind of tool you can get. I, again, I usually just use my Leatherman for this, but you can get like a cabling knife that has a little edge on it. And then we could just take away a tiny bit of the shield off of the blue cable. This, gets, this can get messy, you know, especially yeah. if you make a hundred of these in a day, right? Definitely. You'll, you'll always come out. No matter how many times you've done it, you'll always come out right. you, when you burn yourself or cut yourself at so least once. what I'm doing is I'm taking the back edge of that cabling knife and I'm just, yeah, just pushing pull. the red cable against it and just peeling off a little bit. So now I have two copper tips and a uh, ground made of, out of copper. Yep. Right? So we buy a bunch of different types of heads. We're using Nutrix heads, but you can use any kind of head. Yeah. I just kind of like how these guys connect to some of the ones that are cheap. They'll just slide out of your connection. connection. Or easily break, snap. Exactly. You have had, to redo the whole head, whole head. Exactly. I've had all sorts of these kind of scenarios. Technically, before you do this part, you should put on this. It's the uh, outer, uh, what do you say, lock of the cable. Yeah. And uh, the only reason why is that it is quite difficult to slide this over these after you've cut them. We can do from them. this end. I know, I'm just no, okay. demonstrating how painful it is. Because <laughs> then you have to kind of weave, weave everything in there. It's easier just to go before it's done. The yeah. right way to put it on is like this. Mm. 
before you've cut anything. And then the cable That's just sort of slides through. But because we're going backwards, we're going to go this way. And you see, even that's a pain. I have to go the whole way down the cable. Yeah, imagine if this was a... 100 meter cable. Yeah. It's, and I've done that. It's not worth it. You know what I've done? I just cut the head off, and, or cut, yeah. the, cut yeah, this off and redid it. that. Yeah. <laughs> Save yourself some time. Yeah. Okay. Now, before I do anything else, I want to look. The, mount, the male mount and the female mount are inverted. So the pins are kind of backwards on the female to the male. You kind of have to think backwards. Here, that's pin one, that's pin two, and that's pin three. And on this guy, this is pin one, that's pin two, and that's pin three. So, it, I mean, it's, it's the same. It ends up being the same, but when you're making it, you're making it upside down. So you have to pay attention to which number you're pointing at. And I know the camera's not going to be able to see this. It is the tiniest numbers the world has ever known. So there you go. That's pin one. Mm -hmm. So pin one is ground. Pin two is hot. So your cable that would have some current through it. And pin three is your not. Neutral. It's your neutral. Yeah. That's right. So that's the th a little saying that you that you can remember. One is ground, two is hot, three, three is, is not. not. Now, the reason why I cut this short, you can see how exposed the pins are in the male one. The female head, you can see, actually, it's a little bit longer. So I can sort of stick this really far into the female one. So I'll make the female head a little bit, or the female leads, a little bit longer. But for the male one, I have nowhere else to hide the extra cable. No. And if I make it too long, it ends up twisting around itself. Now and That's when you get noise and stuff like that. Exactly. You can get noise inside the cable. Even yeah. if you make the cable perfectly well, you know, people twist the cable around, they drop it, they do yeah. all sorts of yeah. things with it. Over time, that copper cable can wind around the other ends yeah. and then you have interference in the signal. Also, you want to be really careful that you're not putting too much heat on these and melting the, the rubber on those because the same thing can happen. So let's do this. There's a couple of different methods you can use. Mm -hmm. One, you can actually put some solder into the holes first. You could put some solder onto the cables first. I kind of prefer putting a little bit of solder on the cables first so that they don't fray. So let's do that. So let's start with you yeah. just, you can just hold the cable. I don't think that you need, in this case, the pliers. We had forgotten, we actually have a great uh, clamp. I'm the clamp today. He's the clamp and we're going to try not to burn him. So I just take the solder and I just take a little bit and just drop it on to the cable. I don't need a lot. I just want to stop it from fraying. I put a little bit more on the ground cable so it so it stops so it. So it won't fray as much. Yeah. Exactly. And that solder just sucks right in there. It's beautiful. Now. It's nice. I have a soldering rig that we can select the temperature on and it has a sponge on it so I can wipe off. Mm -hmm. If you let the solder build up on the end of your, your soldering tool, it's going to stop being efficient. Yeah. So, okay. So now with your pliers, so you don't burn your hand. Yeah, this is the fun part, the metal. I just need to make sure that we're lined up right. So two is out. So I'm going to drop the red in first. I actually should have enough on this to be able to tack the red in there. Just a little bit, just to get it to stick. Yep, just like that, that simple. So then I take, I usually put the middle cable, the uh, neutral cable in last. I try to pin either the uh, ground cable Thank you, Linus. Just give him a little push. By the way, this pin will be hot, the one that I just touched. Yeah, that's why I'm not holding it with my hand. Oh, this works so much better with a clamp so that you're not getting smoke in your face. Poor Linus. There you go. There we go. Super easy. Just like that. Right? I'm not going to put the assemble this all the way just yet. I will put that down there for me. But I don't want to melt any of the plastic as, as we wait. It doesn't take long, but like, look, you can feel 
that's still kind of warm, isn't it? <laughs> so I'll start getting work, getting to work on setting up the other side. Mm -hmm. Again, making sure that you put your lock on first. Yeah. I'm going to use my cutting tool. So I just roughly go through. Easy peasy. Again, if you cut too hard, you're gonna cut into the copper all the time, and you don't really wanna be running your knife over the copper overly much. No, makes it dull. Makes it dull. So again, I'm just gonna twist mm -hmm. the braid. Oh, thanks. All right, so then the female head, we're looking at that. Again, even this close, I don't think you can see those numbers, can you? Yeah, of course. So on the female head, it is going to be two on the outside and two here, one here. Mm -hmm. All right, so again, I'm just gonna apply a little bit to the tips to keep them from fraying. So now this time I'm putting the ground in first because it's closer. Yeah. Get in there. Sometimes you gotta finagle these a little bit. Finagle. Put the definition of that up on the up on the tube. Finagle. All right. <laughs> Here we go. So then I'm just going to tack that in there and I'll add some more solder in afterwards. It's easier with the female coupling because it has these nice, uh, yeah, just nice grooves for it. Yeah. Yeah. So now I have to tack these on. I am going to clean up the ground was a little bit, had a little short wire right there. So I'm just going to take that, a short wire to prevent shorting. All right. And then I'm just going to tack on a little bit of extra yeah. solder on the top. You don't need to go crazy with this. Don't go crazy with this. Don't sit there and just pile the solder on like a crazy person. There we go. Nice. All right. Secure. So there you go. All it's, right. it's that simple. You can assemble the male head now, Linus. And Linus is going to show you guys how to test to make sure I didn't mess up. This would be the moment that you see if my eyes are bad and I accidentally took the, uh, took the two for the one or the one for the two. <laughs> This one I'm less worried about putting the cap on, again, because of the, the way that it's made. The male one, you want to take a little more time just because it, it uh, so much metal is exposed that you can melt the plastic fasteners that are here. And then you just use the cap to screw it on. Yeah. And this is a Behringer CT100 that we're going to be using for testing. And they're going to be all over the place. That's how it looks. I mean, you think it's right? You think you did it? I'm pretty sure I did it. <laughs> so that's right. That is right. That's right. The that's one that I have, this is the one he uses. The one that I have is a different make and you actually turn to which pin you're looking yeah, at. Yeah, I know. That's, I, I like that one more. And then it's green lights for good. So red lights, I got scared for a minute. I hope so much that that was helpful for you guys. Yes. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, Send you your have, questions. Yeah, if you have any questions, we have the YouTube. You can comment, you can email us. And uh, yeah. yeah, thank you guys for watching. Thank you so much. Have awesome. a great day.